When we look at the monitor that powers the machine, it's revealed that the man has been sleeping for more than 17 years. Just then, an alarm starts blaring in the room, and the cryo chamber opens. The man, who had been resting for almost two decades, finally wakes up. He slowly looks around the area, which appears to be some kind of bunker. Shortly after, the unnamed man opens his oxygen masks and starts searching the place for food and other essentials. Suddenly, the monitor warns him that the pressure inside the bunker is about to reach dangerous levels, meaning that he will have to evacuate soon. In the next scene, the man gets dressed in an ultra-protective suit, grabs some weapons, and slowly exits the bunker. For safety reasons, he also wears a helmet that allows him to breathe from inside. Soon, he climbs up the bunker, and what he sees sends shivers down his spine. The world, which was once sprawling with life and greenery, has been laid to complete waste because of a nuclear strike. Everything in the vicinity, ranging from buildings to the monuments, and even the wildlife, has been devastated. There's not a single sign of life, and to make matters worse, it keeps raining heavily. The rain contains radioactive elements, which will instantly kill a living organism. Everything looks so grim and dark that the man regrets coming out of the cryo chamber. However, he still hopes that someone or something is there. As the man is wandering around the area, he suddenly gets a message on his monitor which tells him to head to a rendezvous point. The place is about 10 kilometers away, and through this wasteland, it will take hours to reach there. Despite this, the man believes that the risk is worth taking. He simply doesn't want to continue living in this dilapidated and eerie world alone. Along the way, we notice several newspapers lying on the road, which have the headlines of war. This indicates that the world has been brought to this condition by a nuclear strike, which was launched due to war. As the man proceeds further, he comes across several abandoned cars, which have probably been lying there for years. And because of the severe radiation, their color has almost come off. In fact, the whole place looks like a black and white movie. Everything is so depressing and tranquil. Still, the hopeful man continues marching with his gun in hand. After a while, he reaches a destroyed building, which looks like a former government office. The man quickly ventures inside, trying to find something useful. But to his dismay, all he can get his hands on is a telephone, which doesn't even have a connection. And by the looks of the place, it seems as if the inhabitants left or died quite some while back. In the next scene, the man gets out of the building and continues his journey. Sadly, when he tries to navigate using his monitor, it says no signal. Hence, he now has to walk along without any guidance. At this point, he doesn't care if he dies or not. He just wants to interact with someone. 17 long years inside the cryo chamber have taken a toll on him. As he wanders and slowly proceeds forward, suddenly his monitor beeps. It tells him that the environment is safe and that he can breathe the air here. This makes the man extremely happy and he takes off his helmet. Then he feels the rain, something which he hasn't experienced in a long, long time. The man makes sure to enjoy every moment of it, as no one knows if it will be his last. With no food or proper water supply, the man may not even make it to the rendezvous point that has been assigned to him. Just then, the monitor beeps again, and this time, it shows that a team member is in the vicinity. In fact, he or she is just 205 meters away. Excited, the man quickly gathers his belongings and rushes to the place. He's once again hopeful that he can finally meet someone and share his sorrows and happiness with them. But unfortunately, when he reaches the place, he only finds a helmet that belonged to the person. The helmet is in bad condition, implying that its owner died a long time ago. There's also a radio nearby which was emitting the signals to the man. After the man sobs for a while, he takes the helmet to a nearby place and gives its owner a proper burial. Even at grim and devastating times like these, the man has some humanity left in him. Moreover, he even gets down on his knees and says a prayer, hoping that the deceased may finally rest peacefully. Following this, he gets up and continues his journey. A few hours later, the man walks to a different part of the town and reaches a destroyed house. He slowly goes inside and finds some pictures of a family. Here, it's revealed that the house belonged to none other than the unnamed man himself. In the picture, we can see his loving wife and their dog, but it's been years since they passed away. The man stares at the picture for a while and starts crying in despair. Then he continues his journey to the ravaged city. We also get an aerial view of the place, which looks nothing short of an apocalyptic scene. 
Everything is black and white, and the radiation has taken over the place. We also see several wall posters, which talk about war and killing. The man looks over them for a while and scoffs. Then he has some dog food, which is probably the last meal he'll ever have if he doesn't find someone. The man also tries to carry out his day normally by shaving his beard. Amidst the heavy rain, he takes out a razor and uses a broken glass to shave himself. But as he's doing so, the monitor which he was using for getting directions suddenly turns off. Its battery has died, and with that, the man's only hope of getting help also dies. Devastated, he starts crying as if he's lost his own child. In the next scene, the man climbs up the tallest building in the city to execute his final plan. Since he doesn't have anyone to guide him through the destroyed place, he has to signal for help through the sky. This is when he takes out a flare gun and blasts it up. The man hopes that someone will find it and signal it back. For the first few minutes, nothing happens, and the man prepares to leave. However, just then, someone fires back a flare gun, indicating that there's actually someone out there who's also been wandering the dilapidated city like the man. Excited, the man quickly rushes in the direction the flare came from. By this time, it's also stopped raining. Just then, he notices a helmet on top of a car. The man wants to approach the person, but he's also wary of the threat. Hence, he lurks from a corner and observes everything with the help of his binoculars. But when he sees no one, he takes out his rifle and slowly proceeds, ready to face whatever's waiting for him. He takes a defensive position near a car, but suddenly a gun cocks from the other direction. When the man turns back, he finds a woman dressed in the same protective gear as his, ready to shoot him. The two, who obviously don't trust each other, have an intense stare down for a while. But when they realize that it might just be the two of them left in this world, they lower their weapons. Not even a single word spoken, but yet they understand each other instantly. The movie ends as the two look at each other, hoping to start a new life again.